Good evening, this is Pastor Dominic from Evander Revival Center. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to a word from the Lord that I pray will build you up in your faith, encourage you and strengthen you. Um, to all of you that were online a moment ago, I do apologize. There seemed to be a problem with my camera, but thank you so much for accommodating me in that regard. And thank you so much for coming back online. I see some of you already back online. Thank you very much. I do, I'm not sure what was taking place, but praise God, we are back live on Facebook. So I was quickly speaking about fasting tomorrow from the 8th of January right through to the 29th of January. We as a church, Yanni Vanda, and not just us as a church, but a whole lot of churches, believers in the body of Christ worldwide will be taking time over the next three weeks, 21 days, to fast, pray, and to seek the face of God for the new year. We are calling out to God for His blessing upon 2023. We are taking the month of January. We are consecrating it unto God. And we are saying we're setting food aside and we're going to focus in on prayer. We're going to pray and trust God for breakthrough in different areas of our lives. Uh, there's some of us that are trusting God for breakthrough in our financial circumstances. There's others of us that are trusting God for breakthrough in our health. Um, there's a lot of us that are trusting God for breakthrough to come um, <clears throat> in a situation that might be difficult and personal. But whatever it is, howsoever, all of us to a certain degree, we need breakthrough. I know I need breakthrough in certain areas of my life. So I want to invite you over this next three weeks to fast and pray. And you don't have to fast all 21 days. You can maybe say, you know what, take a day or two um, every week over these next three weeks and just consecrate those days unto the Lord. Just spend time in prayer. And as you do, I believe that God will see your faith. And the Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 8, if you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. Now, I said it a moment ago and I say it again in Matthew chapter 6, we read of three things that Jesus expected us to do as believers. He said, when you pray, when you give, when you fast, the expectation is in Matthew chapter 6 from Jesus Christ that we will pray, that we will give but we will also fast. It was an expectation. It wasn't a suggestion from Jesus Christ. And if our Lord and Savior expects us to fast, then that should be a common practice amongst Christians. It should be a common practice amongst believers. So I don't know what you need breakthrough for. I don't know what you're trusting God for. But I believe in 2023, we will see the hand of God if we seek God, if, if we call out to God. And I want to invite you to Come with me over these next three weeks and spend time fasting and praying. And remember, fasting needs to be accompanied by prayer. Uh, fasting without prayer is just a glorified crash diet. And we're not busy with crash diets. We are busy pressing into the presence of God. We are busy spending time in God's word. We are busy spending time interceding. We are busy spending time worshiping God. And uh, I want to come, I will be coming online more often over these next three weeks to encourage you in your faith, to teach you about fasting so that you can be built up in your faith over these next three weeks. So please uh, look towards our platform. I will be here yeah, on Facebook. I'll be sharing the word of God Tuesday night and Thursday night at eight o'clock to encourage you and to build you up in your faith regarding the fasting and praying and seeking God. Well, tonight I'm in the book of Joshua chapter 6, and I'm going to be reading five verses, the very first five verses in Joshua chapter 6. And uh, I just want to say once again, welcome to everybody that's online. It's good to see that everybody is coming online. Thank you so to all of you that take the time to comment, like, and share. I appreciate it so much. I see all of it. And I'm grateful to you. Welcome, Alex Holloway. It's good to have you online. God bless you, my brother. Joey Willifield, it's good to have you online. Tracy Reinders, it's good to have you online. Runel Ambrose, it's good to have you online. Ewald Bomer, it's good to have you online, my brother. God bless you. 
Welcome, Pastor Yolanda van Vieren. It's good to have you online. Hallelujah. It's good to see everybody online. I see that we've got quite a few people online, but Facebook is not showing me everybody that's online. So if I did not mention your name, please do not get offended. Uh, do understand that that's a part of technology. Jana Spies. It's good to have you online. Good evening to you. Well, let's get into the Word of God. I've got a word to share, and uh, this is a word that I believe is prophetic for 2023. And if you listen to this word and open up your heart to receive what God says right now, over these next couple of moments, uh, I believe this can be a word of impact for the new year. Now listen to what Joshua chapter 6 verse 1 to 5 says. Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go in or out. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given Jericho its king and all its strong warriors. I've given them unto you. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns. And when you hear the priests give a long blast on the ram's horns, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town. Let me read that last Part again, when you hear the priests give one long blast on the ram's horns, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse. When will the walls collapse? When there's a shout. And then the people can charge straight into the town. Now, as we read the book of Joshua, we read of how the nation of Israel is in a period of transition. Right up until this point in the book of Joshua, or till the book of Joshua, Israel has been going through a difficult season of transition. In fact, they had been delivered out of Egypt. God delivered them supernaturally out of Egypt. They came into the wilderness, into the desert. And for 40 years, they had to wander around in the desert until a whole unbelieving generation died out. It was not until the new generation that was born in the wilderness was ready to go into the promised land that, is, that Israel came to the border of the promised land. And as they came to the border of the promised land, we read in Joshua chapter 3 how God did a miracle in their midst and he split the Jordan River wide open so that all of the Israelites could cross over on dry ground. Now Israel have entered into the promised land in Joshua chapter 4 and Joshua chapter 5. They are now in the promised land in the land of Canaan. But now they still have to go and possess the land. Although they in the land, they still need to possess the cities. Now there was a collection of cities right throughout the promised land, the land of Canaan, that the Canaanites possessed, and Israel had to take one city at a time. This was a historical moment for Israel to come into the promised land, because for more than 400 years, they had been clinging unto a promise that God had given unto their forefather Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. That they will one day have a land of their own. In fact, God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, when he was in the land of Canaan previously, he said to him, I will bring your descendants into this land and they will possess this land. In other words, they will have property. They will have a land for themselves. They will have cities they've never built. They will have vineyards they've never planted. They will have a land where they can build a future and where they can create a tomorrow for their children. 
God promised this to Abraham. But it took somewhat 400 years before that promise ever materialized or came to fruition. Now, I don't want to suggest that if you are trusting God for breakthrough in 2023, or you're trusting God for breakthrough in a certain area, that it's going to take a long time before it happens. Certainly not 400 years. But Israel had to wait 400 years before the promise that was given unto Abraham ever manifested. What am I trying to say? When God promises something, it will come to pass. It might not always come to pass at the time that you expected or the time that you wanted or the time that I want or expected. But if we are willing to be patient and wait on the Lord, we will see the promises of God come to fruition. Now, what do you need breakthrough for in 2023? What is it that you are trusting God for? I want to tell you, if you are trusting God for something and you can back it up with scripture and you can base it on scripture, God will bring it to pass. Now, listen to what the Lord says. And I want to share this with you because this is for me inspirational. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. This is a scripture that you need to meditate on. This is a scripture that you need to have close to your heart because life can get discouraging. And if we do not meditate on God's word, life can overwhelm you. But listen to what God says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. I am watching and I will certainly carry out all my plans, says the Lord. In other words, God is watching. One translation, he says, I'm watching over my word to perform it. What God promises, he will do. What God said in his word, he will do. If you have got a word from the Lord and you are trusting God and you are trusting God for breakthrough, I want to tell you, do not give up. It will come to pass in 2023. And you will see the hand of God. I've come to declare that to you tonight. In fact, Psalm 37 verse 7. This is what David encourages us with. And this should be encouragement to you while you're waiting on the Lord. Listen to what David says. Be still in the presence of, Lord, of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. That's the key is patience. And you know, that's not a, that's not a virtue that I have. It doesn't come naturally to me to be patient. I want something to happen and I want it to happen now. But when it comes to faith, oftentimes we're going to have to exercise patience as we wait on the Lord. But let me tell you something. When things fall into place and when God begins to manifest his promises and when the breakthrough comes, it will not be a moment too late. That's why we need to keep our eyes fixed on God. I've come tonight to declare to you that this is going to be a Psalm 118 verse 23 year for you. And I believe God's going to give you a testimony. And what does Psalm 118 verse 23 say? This is the Lord's doing and it's wonderful to see. This is the Lord's doing and it's wonderful to see. Israel coming into the promised land was the Lord's doing. And it must have been wonderful to behold the promised land. A land that their fathers, their forefathers dreamt about. That their ancestors dreamt about. They entered into the land, but it was God's doing. He split the Jordan River open for them. He made a way for them. And God will make a way for you. What are you trusting God for? I want to tell you that this is going to be a breakthrough season. I don't care what's happening in the economy. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care who's not for you. I've come to tell you, if you are standing upon God's word and you are focused on God and you choose to serve God, no matter how dark the times are, no matter what's happening in our world, you will be able to testify in time. That the Lord is busy and it is a good thing. It is wonderful to see. One translation says it is a marvelous thing to behold. Psalm 118 verse 23. So yeah, is Israel in the promised land. Yeah, they standing in the promised land. 
And their leader Joshua. Who was a man of action. He is ready to move forward. In this land. But this is a land that he's never been in. You see Joshua was acquainted with the desert. He was acquainted with the wilderness. He knew how to navigate in the wilderness. Because he had come out of Egypt. And he knew for 40 years. How to work in the desert. Where to go in the desert. He could navigate in the desert. But now he's entered into the promised land. And he's never been here before. He's about to pioneer a new path for the nation of Israel into the promised land. You see, Joshua was the commander of the Israelite army. And not only that, he was Moses' 2IC, second in command. And now when Moses passed away in Joshua chapter 1, we read of how God calls Joshua to lead the nation of Israel into the promised land. He has been blessed with a holy task, but yet it's a burden of leadership to lead the nation of Israel forward. And I want to tell you, leadership is not easy. I can laugh sometimes when I'm in the ministry and I see how people are trying to grab onto leadership or trying to grab onto power. And I want to tell you, It has a burden. It's not to be taken lightly. And unless God graces you for leadership or leadership position, you should not try and do it in your own strength. Joshua has been called to lead the nation of Israel forward into the promised land. But it's maybe a good thing that he did not know where to go at first and what to do. You see, uncertainty for us as believers is not always a bad thing. And we are living in uncertain times. If you look around you, there's so much uncertainty. There's so much uncertainty in the world that we are living in. Uncertainty when it comes to God, it's good. It's good. It's not always nice. It's not always fun. But uncertainty forces you and it forces me to be dependent upon God. It forces us to turn to God when our backs are against the wall, so to speak. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, We must live by faith and not by sight. We must live by faith and not by sight. In other words, sight, what you see with your physical eyes, could be the limitation to your faith. I was in prayer this week and God was speaking to me about. Um, I should not listen to the noise of the world. I should not look to the world. Because that's going to dictate my faith. I need to look to his word. I need to look to him. And as I look to his word and as I look to God. And I say keep my focus on the Lord. I will be able to get to where I need to go. And I will get the breakthrough that I need in 2023. And I want to encourage you with that. Don't go by what you see. Don't go by what you see taking place around you. Go by what God has said in his word. Go by what God has spoken to you in your heart. Stand upon God's word. What you see with your physical eyes can be an opposition to your faith. How does faith come? The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's the key to great faith. It's to hear God's word. And I want to commend you for listening to God's word. I want to commend you for being hungry and listening to what God says. Because as you listen to God's word, God will increase your faith. He will strengthen your faith. That's the key to deepening your faith. I can always tell when somebody has got great faith, they consume in the word of God. They've got a huge consumption of the word of God. You can always tell. You can tell when somebody's got a good diet physically. Just just take a look. If you look at their bodies, you can tell they've got a good diet. You know, you can't bluff when you've got a bad diet. You can't bluff people and say that you're dieting and you're exercising when you're not eating well and you're not exercising. It will always show on the outside. It's the same with faith. You can't bluff people and say, yes, I'm listening to the word. I'm meditating on the word. Guess what? It will show up in your life when crises come, when storms come. I've seen people with tremendous faith. When storms come, man, they just, they, they're not bugged. Why? Because they depended upon God. They're not worried. Why? Because they're feeding upon God's word. 
They feed in upon God's word. And I believe that's what you're going to do in 2023. I believe you're going to feed upon God's word. And as you feed upon God's word, your faith is going to elevate. Your faith is going to increase. And that which seems challenging, in fact, it's going to be nothing. You're going to see how God's going to give you the breakthrough that you need. Joshua was a man of action. This was a man that was willing to take the bull by the horn, so to speak. He's a man of action in Joshua chapter 5. And we read of how he is advancing to the, the very first city in the land of Canaan, in the promised land. He is going towards Jericho. And he's got a sword in his hand and he's ready to go to war. And on his way to Jericho, he has an encounter. And an encounter not just with any man. He has an encounter with the angel of the Lord. God himself. Joshua encounters God on the way to Jericho. He runs into God. And when he realizes that it's the Lord. The Bible says he had a reaction towards God. And that should be all of our reactions. In fact, I want to read it. Listen to this. Joshua chapter 5. And I want to read a couple of verses here. Listen to what it says. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. When Joshua was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a sword in the hand. Joshua went up to him and demanded, are you a friend or are you a foe? I can laugh when Joshua asked that. In other words, what Joshua was asking is, are you for us or are you against us? We live in a world where people try to use God as a weapon. We try to use God as a weapon to justify our arguments and to justify why we are right. But I want to tell you, God is not on anybody's side. God is for himself. He's not for any person. And it's not a question of, is God for you? The question is, are you for God? Are you with God? I cannot use God as a tool to say, oh, God is with me. So he will then punish whoever comes against me. You can't do that. God is not going to fight your battles. It's about you fighting with God and doing what he wants you to accomplish here on earth. Are you for us or are you against us? Are you a friend or are you a foe? Verse, four, verse 14. Neither one, he replied. I'm the commander of the Lord's army. I'm not for anybody. I'm for myself. I'm God. I'm all by myself. Child of God, do you want to see the hand of God in this new year? Get on God's side. Get to where God is. You see, we've got to stop having this attitude. And I'm speaking about myself where we try and get God to do our bidding. Get God to fulfill our agenda. We've got to ask, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is your agenda? What is your plan? What do you want me to do in 2023? And as we get direction then from the Lord, that's where I believe we will see the hand of God. But listen to Joshua's attitude. Listen to what he does when he realizes that he's encountered the angel of the Lord. And many Bible scholars believe this was the Lord himself. Listen to this. At this, Joshua fell with his face to the ground in reverence. In reverence. I'm at your command, Joshua said. What do you want your servant to do? Joshua's attitude in the presence of God was to humble himself before the Lord, to go on his knees, and to immediately be at the Lord's service. I want to tell you, a key to experiencing more and more of God's presence is humility. Humility. Humility is where you realize your need to be dependent upon God and God alone. That's where you humble. You don't have this attitude. You've arrived. You've achieved it all. You know it all. You realize that you need God. You realize that you're nothing without God. Joshua in the presence of God fell before the Lord. Fell with his face to the ground. He bowed before the Lord. And he said, I am at your command. Yar is the leader of the nation of Israel. Yar is this great military commander. And yet when he came into the presence of God, he humbled himself and he went on his knees. 
And I want to tell you, that's what we're doing in this fasting period. We are humbling ourselves before God. We are going on our knees, so to speak, by fasting and praying. And we are calling out to God and we're saying, what do you want us to do? We are at your service. What is your agenda for my life? What do you want me to do when it comes to my marriage? What is it that you want me to do when it comes to raising my children? What is it that you want me to do, Lord, in my business, in my ministry? What is it that you want me to do where I am, at school, at work, at home? What is it that you want me to do? Give me direction. Give me wisdom. I will be your servant. You see, fasting is not twisting God's arm to do what you want him to do. Fasting is you surrendering to God. It's you crucifying the flesh and you saying to your flesh, you're not going to have your way. Where you would have fed yourself physically, you feed yourself spiritually. And where you would have eaten solid food, now you spend time eating spiritual food, reading God's word, praying, seeking the Lord. I want to tell you, when you truly have an encounter with God, it will be evident in your life. You don't have to go around telling people that you've got an encounter with God, that you've been fasting and praying and seeking the Lord, and the Lord has spoke to you in a divine way, or God has encountered you in a divine way. You don't have to convince anybody. When God touches you, people will see it. You know, Moses came down from the mountain, and his face glowed. His face glowed because he was in the presence of God. You know, the prophet Isaiah was in the presence of God, and in the presence of God, in Isaiah chapter 6, he saw the glory of God. He experienced the glory of God. And what happened? He was immediately convicted of what he says. His own lips. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. I want to tell you, it's impossible that you seek God, call out to God, and God does not speak to you about you. This week I've seen that God has been dealing with me about me. He's been dealing with me about the man in the mirror. He's been showing me where I need to change. He's been showing me where I need to repent. He's been showing me where I need to make things right. God has been speaking to me about me in my time of fasting, in my time of consecration. God has been showing me where I need to change. I want to tell you, child of God, that is crucial as we seek the Lord at the beginning of this year. We must change before we expect our circumstances to change. I'm afraid to say it, but Christians are so fixed on their circumstances changing. Not all. Most Christians are so fixed on having God change their circumstances. When God actually wants to change you. God will always change you before he changes your circumstances. Joshua just, he came into the presence of God and he said, Lord, here I am. I'm your servant. He went on his knees. He dropped his sword to the ground. Maybe you need to hear that. Maybe that's the key to your breakthrough. Going on your knees before the Lord. And going before God and saying, I'm your servant. You don't have to have it all figured out. It's a good thing if you don't have it figured out. You don't have to have all the answers. Just come into the service of God. I want to tell you, if you want the devil to flee from you in 2023... Do you want the devil to flee from you? Just do what James tells us to do in James chapter 4 verse 7. He says, submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee. You can always tell when the devil's busy with somebody or he's busy causing havoc in somebody's life. You can always see it. They're not submitted unto God. When you submit it unto God, when you submit it unto the Lord, the devil has to flee. That's what the Bible says. That's not what I say. It's what the Bible says. And that's why we fasting and praying. We submitting ourselves unto God. We getting rid of spiritual junk, so to speak. We detoxing our soul. And we coming into the presence of God and we saying, Lord, help me. I'm at your service. I am your servant. The Bible says that God spoke to Joshua. Listen to this verse 15. And the commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. I love that. God encounters Joshua on the way to battle with Jericho. And God turns his battlefield into a sanctuary, a place 
of encounter. I want to tell you, it's not just that church that God wants to encounter you. God wants to encounter you right where you are, in your workplace, at school, at the, man, even at home, while you're washing dishes. God wants to encounter you even while you're driving in the car. You just got to be open to what God wants to do. We got to get rid of our religious thinking. We got to get rid of this traditional legalistic thinking. And we got to be open to what God wants to do. God encountered Joshua. And the Bible in Joshua chapter 5 concludes with these words in verse 15. And Joshua did as he was told. Joshua did as he was told. You see, that's the key. That's the key to success in 2023. Doing what God says. Obedience to his word. Obedience to his word. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. Just obey God's word. You've got the whole Bible. Precious promises in this Bible. Promises about how God's healed you, about how God's got a future for you, about how God will prosper you, about how God will give you abundance and God will bless you with overflow. I can give you promise upon promise upon promise for every area of life in the Bible. I can show you how God wants to bless his children right here in the scriptures. But you see, all the promises of God come with a prerequisite. In other words, it comes with a condition. You've got to do what God says. And when you do what God says, you get what God promises. That's what God told Cain in Genesis chapter 4. If you do not do, if you do what's right, will I not bless you? And I believe God speaks to every Christian in a way. And he says, just do what I say. I will bless you. You don't have to get jealous about who else is being blessed and who else God is prospering. Just do what God says. And he will bless you. Now the Bible tells us. In Joshua chapter 6. And I read it earlier. That the city of Jericho. Which was the very first city by the way. In the promised land. Was shut up. It was closed. It was fortified. Now the city of Jericho. Was seen by the Canaanites. As a city that was impossible to take. It was seen as impossible to take the city of Jericho because it was seen as a place that you could not penetrate. It had high walls of about seven stories high right around the city. And not only that, they say some parts of the walls were so thick, it was six meters thick. And then they had also military guards on top of the walls that could see for kilometers so they would have seen the Israelites coming. So to the Canaanites and to the citizens of Jericho, they were untouchable. It was an impossible task for Joshua to possess the city of Jericho. For, Jer for Joshua, Jericho is the deal breaker. It's the make or break point in going into the promised land. It's the very first city. They've got to possess it. God has sent them into the promised land. This is now going to be the proof that God is with them. Is God going to really give them the promised land? Is God really going to hand over Jericho to them? Because if they did not take Jericho, then the rest of the land of Canaan would realize that Israel did not have it in them to overcome the cities. And that would increase their confidence as Israel came to make war. Because the Canaanites knew that war was coming. Jericho knew that war was coming. That's why they closed up the city. In fact, uh, if you go study the whole context of Jericho in Joshua chapter 6, they have just collected their harvests. And they had natural springs. So they could close up their city for months on end. They had enough food. They had enough water. They had enough military might. So they could be closed. And here, here is Joshua with the nation of Israel. And it seems impossible that they can take this city. Now I want to ask you. You that is watching. You that is listening. What is your Jericho? What is that one thing that you are trusting God for supernatural breakthrough for? I'm not just saying breakthrough, but supernatural breakthrough. You know you can't do it in your own strength. You know you can't overcome it in your own strength. 
What is it? What is that one area in your life that you need breakthrough in 2023? What is your Jericho? What is it that is coming against you or standing before you and it's overwhelming you? This is where Israel is. From a natural standpoint, it seemed impossible to ever take Jericho. But I want to come and tell you today, Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said it himself, what's impossible for man is possible with God. I want to say that again. What is impossible with man is possible with God. What the doctor has said, I've got respect for doctors. They are uh, really, they are qualified people and we should respect them and honor them, but they don't have the final say. God's word is the final say. What is impossible for doctors is possible with God. What looks impossible in your finances is possible with God. God can blow your mind. God can make a way where there seems to be no way. You might not be able to see a way, but God can make a way. God can open a door that you never thought possible. And he can pour out such a blessing over your life that you never even imagined. God is God. That's what makes him God. He's sovereign. He's sovereign above all things. You see, Joshua, in this passage of scripture... He knew how to make war. He was a man of war. He knew how to swing the sword. He knew how to command men into war. But nowhere had he ever been trained to ever conquer a city like Jericho. So more than ever, Joshua has to now be dependent upon God. You see, there's a danger in being dependent upon your own wisdom. You're going to have to come to a place where you are dependent upon God. But I love what God says. Listen to what God says here. In verse 2. But the Lord said to Joshua. I have given. Past tense. Given. You Jericho. It's king. And all its strong warriors. I have given you Jericho. I have given you Jericho. People are saying. You won't be able to do it. Your critics are waiting for you to fail. Your enemies I have got an expectation that you won't overcome. But I, God, am telling you, I have already given you the breakthrough. It is yours. I've given you the breakthrough. This is, for me, powerful. You see, sometimes we get stuck in life. We get burdened. We become overwhelmed. But it's good to get things from God's point of view. To see things from God's point of view. To see life from God's point of view. From God's point of view, Jericho already belonged to Joshua and the Israelites. From the Canaanites' point of view, Israel could not do it. From Joshua's point of view, he had to trust God. He saw shut up walls. He saw gates that were closed. He saw a fortified city. And now Joshua had to make a decision. Is he going to do what God says, even though it does not make sense? You see, when God speaks to us, it won't always make sense. Because God speaks the language of faith. And faith will often contradict your circumstances. Faith will often contradict your reality. And while you are walking by faith, and while you're listening to God, you're going to have to make a decision. Am I going to allow my reality to overwhelm my faith? Or am I going to put my trust in God? Listen to what the Bible says in Romans chapter 4 verse 17. In the Amplified Translation. God calls into being that which does not exist. God calls things into being which do not exist. God speaks in a way. And if you have to hear what God says. And if you have to hear what God is saying right now. It won't make sense. God called Abraham a father of nations long before he ever had a son. God called David a man after his own heart while he was a shepherd boy. Jesus spoke to Peter and he called him Peter when he was called Simon. He called him a rock when he was actually called Simon. God spoke to Jacob at the Yabok and he called him Israel when he was still a deceiver. 
when he still had so much faults and flaws. God called him royalty. If God had to speak to you, he calls you an overcomer. He says that you are healed. He says that you are delivered. If you read the Bible, so many blessings and promises of God. It's a done deal. It's past tense. Jericho, it's a done deal. But it's going to take some faith to possess it. And you're going to have to walk out this in obedience. You're going to have to walk out this in obedience. You don't have to work it out. Just do what God says. That's the key. Just do what God says. Just do what God says. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to wiggle and waggle through life. Hoping that you'll make it. Just do what God says. Get up every day. Be faithful. Get up every day. Have a good attitude. Get up every day. Pray. Get up every day. Meditate on God's promises. Go each week to church. Get planted. Get rooted. Just do what you can. And as you do what you can, God will do what you can't. Just obey. Just obey. Just obey. Even when you don't see the promise coming to pass. Just obey. When, even when you don't feel like being faithful. Just, just keep praying. You can't go by your emotions. You can't go by your feelings. You've got to go by how God leads you, by His Spirit. So God gives five commands. Five commands to Joshua. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 3 to 5. He says these things to him because he's telling him, Listen, I'm going to give this city unto you. Do these five things. Number one, Joshua and the men of war were to walk around the city one time per day, Every day for six days. Seven priests, number two, seven priests with seven horns, ram's horns, will walk before them with the Ark of Covenant. In other words, God was telling the Israelites and he's telling us, unless I go before you, the victory won't come. Number three, then on the seventh day, Joshua and the men of war, war were, not allowed, were not to walk around just once, but they were to walk around Seven times around the fortified city. And then at the end of the seventh day. On the seventh march around the city. It was at that moment. That they were to blow the ram's horns. And then the people were to shout as loud as they can. And then finally God says. Then you will go in and possess the city. Think about this. For six days long. One time per day. They were to walk around the city. On the seventh day, they were to go seven times around the city. Joshua commanded the people not to say a word for six days long. For six days long, even on the seventh day while they were marching, they were not allowed to say a word. That's crucial. They were not allowed to say the word because Joshua was not going to allow anyone to utter anything that was not of God, that was not of faith. He said, be quiet, be quiet. And only when you hear the ram's horn, then you will shout. On the seventh day, the Israelites were there, the men of war with Joshua, the seven priests with the seven ram's horns and the Ark of the Covenant were going before them. And when they had come the seventh time around Jericho, the Bible says, then they blew the trumpets, they blew the ram's horns. And as they blew the ram's horns, the people shouted. And with that shout, the walls came crumbling down. The walls came crumbling down at the shout of the Israelites. Now think with me. They were to shout before the walls ever came down. They were to shout when the ram's horns blew. They did not shout when they possessed the land, uh, the, the city. They did not shout when they defeated the citizens of Jericho. They were to shout ever before the walls came down. And with the shout, the walls came down. What am I trying to say? Praise will always precede your victory. In fact, praise is the sound of victory. Praise is the sound of victory. You see, the ram's horn, it's very significant why they were using the ram's horn. The ram's horn in the Old Testament was used in celebrations 
and on the battlefield. In fact, God even said in Numbers chapter 10 verse 9, that when they go into the land and the enemies attack them, they are to blow on the ram's horn onto trumpets. Because this was symbolic of victory. This was symbolic of God coming through for them. So blowing on the ram's horn, that would have been a sound of victory. That would have been a sound of triumph for the Israelites. But that was happening even before the walls came down. It was only after the shout took place, only after the ram's horns that were blowing, that the walls came down. I want to tell you, you're going to have to praise God before you ever see the breakthrough. You're going to have to worship God before you ever see your victory. In fact, your victory begins in your praise. Your victory begins when you are calling out to God, when you are worshiping God. Are you willing to worship God even when you don't see the breakthrough? Even when you don't see that which you trust in God for? Listen to what the Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 1. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. Hallelujah. I will praise the Lord at all times. Good times or bad times. I will praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Amplified translation. Paul speaking. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. And through us spreads and makes evident everywhere the sweet fragrance of the knowledge of Him. In other words, I want to tell you. As a Christian, you are called to win. If you are truly a child of God, you are never called to defeat. You are never called to mediocrity. You are called to win. You are called to victory. And when you worship God, you worship Him from a standpoint of victory. You are not defeated in Jesus. You are victorious in Jesus Christ. I want to ask you, is Jesus defeated? Certainly not. He overcame the death. He overcame the grave. He overcame death and sin. He overcame the enemy. And he's seated on the right hand of the Father. And he's coming back again for the brightest church. He is a victorious Savior. And he's your Savior. And in him you've got victory. Your walls of your Jericho are going to come down in 2023. With the shout of praise. With the shout of victory. I want you to cling unto the promises of God. And like Joshua, take God at His word. Be willing to obey even when it does not make sense. Even when it looks foolish, do what God says. Make a conscious decision right now, going into this new year, that you're going to trust God no matter what. I know life might not be easy. And I know this future is uncertain. And I know there's so much things coming against us. But let me tell you something. This is the time. This is the season where God is going to give us a testimony. Like I said, Psalm 118 verse 23. We are going to be able to look back and declare that this is the Lord's doing. And it's wonderful to see. I want to pray for you right now. Father God of our Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you tonight and I bring every brother and sister before you. Lord, you know the battles, the struggles. You know what they're going through. And I pray, Lord, right now, as they are trusting you for breakthrough with the Jericho that they have in their midst, that thing that they are trusting you for breakthrough for. Lord, you know every single person's heart. You know all of their desires. I pray, Lord, that you would bring supernatural breakthrough in 2023. I pray that as they praise you, as they worship you, that they will see the hand of God in this new year. I pray, Lord, Father God, give every single one of us, Lord, Father God, the faith to overcome. Increase our faith, Lord Jesus. I want to pray like the disciples prayed. Increase our faith that we will be able to overcome, that we will not fall back in defeat, that we will not shrink back. And Lord, that we will advance and move forward into the promises of God. I pray right now, Lord, Father God, help us, Lord, to overcome where we should overcome and not just to accept failure. I pray right now for strength for every believer, for every child of God that is watching. And I pray that you would bless your children, that you'd watch over your children in this week to come. Encourage and strengthen us as we fast, as we seek you over this next three weeks. We give you all the glory and honor. We give you all the praise. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
I want to give you the opportunity right now to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you say, Pastor, I want to make right with God. I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to invite you to pray the sinner's prayer with me. What is the sinner's prayer? That's where you confess Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Where you declare Jesus Christ as Lord. Where you realize your need for Him. So right there where you are, if you're saying, I want to give my heart to Jesus, don't you want to pray this prayer with me? Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean in your blood. I surrender my life to you. I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Jesus, that you're coming back again for the bride, your church. I surrender my life to you. Amen. I believe if you prayed that prayer, you've received the free gift of salvation. Get into a good Bible-based church. Keep God first place. Spend time praying. Spend time reading the Bible. And as you do that, you will see the hand of God upon your life. You will experience the goodness of God. It doesn't mean that you won't go through storms. It doesn't mean that you won't experience problems. But there will be a supernatural grace to go through all of that because God is with you. I just want to greet everybody that's going on, uh, that's online. So if you're going to go offline, God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday tomorrow. And please remember, Take time to fast and pray with us for the next three weeks as we seek the Lord, as we call out to God for 2023. Amen. Well, welcome, Alex Holloway. It's good to have you online. God bless you, my brother. Runel Ambrose, it's good to have you online. John Dean Stain, my brother, it's good to have you online. And Cindy Stain, it's good to have you online. God bless you. Pastor Yolanda van Fieden, God bless you. It's good to have you online. Louisa Fisser, it's good to have you online. Carol, Caroline Kapp, welcome. It's good to have you online. Jana Spies, it's good to have you online. God bless you. Lydia Stein, it's good to have you online. Welcome. Tracy Reinders, welcome. Joey Ulifir, welcome. Sunay Sykes, welcome. Salome Falun, welcome. Tilda Creel, it's good to have you online. God bless you. Amen. It's good to see everybody online. Well, that's all that I have for tonight. Remember, Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, I'll be live here on Facebook to teach you the Word of God, to share with you inspiration, especially in this time of fasting and praying, to encourage you and build you up in your faith. That's all that I have for this evening. This is Pastor Dominic. I'm signing out.